So there has been a bunch of new information about Modern Warfare 3 Warzone that has just dropped. And I want to keep everyone up to date with it. Like, for instance, this right here, the Tier 100 Modern Warfare 3 Season 1 Battle Pass reward. They just, for whatever reason, decided to leak this one out here. The Scorcher Black Cell Pass. I think you're going to be essentially like this giant target on the map if you happen to use this skin in Warzone. But the gun variant does look actually pretty cool. But apart from that, there is a whole bunch of information about what's happening in game. The quality of life changes, just some of the nitty gritty stuff. We have over 40 plus different changes to go through so sit back relax and enjoy so first thing we're taking a look at here is kind of the general pacing of what's going to happen on years extend so battle royale player count for years extend is going to be at 100 players which is a little bit smaller than what we're normally used to here with uh, Mazra and some of the other big maps previously but the map size is actually 20% smaller than Almazra. There's actually going to be new circle sizes and timings that are now a total of 20 minutes. So the game should not run nearly as long, which is actually kind of a good thing to keep the pace of the game going. Uh, unsuppressed red dots, of course, uh, support more engagements because, of course, when you fire a unsuppressed weapon on the radar, you will show up as a red dot which can lead to a lot more engagements, which is really sick. Of course, Raven is going to be monitoring all of this. They put out a longer tweet here this morning saying that they are kind of doubling down on the 100 player count, but of course they will definitely be watching over everything. They're incredibly good at listening to community feedback. So if 100 players is not enough or too much, or whatever the case may be, they will definitely alter that accordingly. There is a return, of course, of the big game bounty, the advanced UAV and the new bounty reward, the one UAV ping. Uh, there's more second chance mechanics like the uh, new gulag public event to go again and uh, there's also of course going to be like jail breaks and stuff like that so it's not necessarily like when you go down you're going to be down for the count permanently there is a chance you do come back which is really nice i know sometimes when you get out in those battle royale maps you just go down pretty early on it can suck uh, the stability and performance of the game also does remain a priority so of course that's why they have the 100 players there and they will evaluate everything kind of as, as it goes just to make sure that you know everything fits in line it is a very good playable experience but this is going to be a bit of a long one here so we have a ton of season one quality of life changes and i want to kind of go over all these here as quickly as possible because there is a ton of them so there is the legendary supply drop box guitar riff that celebration is going to be coming back you guys remember we used to open crates you'd be able to get that from a legendary box the og loadout crate model has returned um the allied loadout crates now have an in-world highlight which is really nice making it a little bit easier to be able to see the gas mask is now the first item in the loadout UI, so it's very easy to be able to put on or take off. The loadout UI is now a carousel, which makes it a little bit easier than it has been previously. Uh, gulag entry kits can now be stowed in the backpack for a teammate, so that way, you know, when you have a gulag entry kit, you can pick it up even if you already have one, stow it, then give it to a teammate. This can be really nice like that. Increased gulag entry kit drop rate is also going to be in loot. So that's once again, kind of trying to keep people actually in the game, which is a good thing. Uh, backpack to load out auto equip of items, which is going to be awesome. And then of course, enemy pings show in kill cams, which is another great thing as well. One shot snipers have indeed returned, which is a huge, huge thing. Pretty much sniping, and I believe in Warzone 2. I mean, that's got to be the least I've ever used a sniper in any Call of Duty. I personally played a lot of Rebirth Island when that was out, so I didn't do a ton of sniping, but it was always a viable option if I wanted to whip out my Car 98 or something like that, or the K-Swiss, or any of those snipers, and I really just didn't feel any sort of inclination or need within Warzone 2 to even use a sniper because they sucked. Like, the entire duration of the game, they always sucked. So, I'm happy one-shot snipers are returning. There's no weapon tuning in the gunsmith, which is another beautiful thing. So there's no weapon tuning. There's none in Modern Warfare 3 right now. For any guys that own MW3, you'll notice that when you max out a gun, there is no ability to tune, which I think is how it should have been in the first place. I don't think there's any reason MW2 should have had tuning. They just overcomplicated the process and it made it so guns were just more slow, sluggish, less fun, et cetera, et cetera. I hated it the entire way through. Next up, there's the post-victory gulag looting, which will help you guys in terms of getting your loot here. Uh, when you actually win, there's, a, of course, those few seconds after getting that W, so there may be some cash on the ground or something like that, or some ammo or a weapon to be able to bring back with you. Uh, buy stations are now accessible 30 meters into the gas, so they don't immediately just turn off, which is great. Uh, buy stations show on a TAC map if they are accessible, because they also updated the TAC map icons to actually be easier to be able to see and read, which is something we desperately needed. Uh, there's new buy station inventory. There's, of course, the slide distance is now impacted by the surface incline. So if you're going downhill, you can slide a little bit farther. 
a uh, fire sale discount is now up to 50 percent off i believe before is probably maybe about 30 ish percent but now it's up to 50 so getting a uav for instance from you know six thousand dollars down to three thousand is a huge huge deal because i think it went from like six thousand down to like 4200 as the current point in time at least on vondel that's how it is a uh, smoke grenade duration is nerfed by 20 percent, so i think they're trying to keep people from just smoking out and just you know being ridiculous with it uh, portable radar distance is doubled to 76 meters. I mean, that's, that makes sense. That's fine. I don't really ever think portable radars got used and abused like they used to. Uh, armor box, munitions box, no longer have a delay when de uh, deployed. Everyone knows that when you throw down an armor box or a plate box, it's kind of a nice little animation that takes a sweet minute uh, to be able to put down, and we're not really a fan of that, so I'm glad they're kind of just totally removing it. A very unnecessary thing when the rest of the game is made to be like snappy and quick and fluid. That was just one of those things that really slowed you down. Uh, there's the reduced uh, loadout cost to $15,000. So that's the maximum. And the loadout course will scale based on your squad size. I assume it's going to be about $3,500, $4,000 per person. It'll probably lower it down. You know, obviously based, you know, solo duos, trios, quads, it's going to lower it down. Or if, just depending on if you have a person that like lags out the game, etc. It will go on based on your squad size, which is really nice. A Model Warfare 3 operators will have a new default parachute. That's just because, you know, obviously MW2, MW3, this is the first uh, integration into Warzone 2. Now, here's a bit of a new thing. Abandoning a stronghold will actually neutralize it. So in Warzone 2, if you were at a, a stronghold and you just pretty much, you know, you had it, you could actually leave and keep the stronghold and that UAV ping would just kind of go permanently. And now it's not going to be the case when you leave it. It can be neutralized and another team can come through and get it and get the UAV ping and, of course, get their loadout. So that will be a thing in the game. I, like, I think that's a nice little quality of life update and change. Also, the gas mask overlay has been adjusted for a clearer view. So when you are wearing a gas mask, it's not going to take up as much of your screen. Kind of makes you feel like you almost have like those horse flap blinders on or something like that. I don't, I'm not really that big of a fan, so it is what it is, but I'm glad they've actually fixed it. Plate carriers are now a one-to-one -one in function with their perk. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but it is nonetheless a change. Stealth vests are no longer counters to the advanced UAV. Uh, I don't really think that was ever necessary to have a stealth vest be a counter to the advance. I've so many times I've picked up, you know, three UAVs and I'm like, okay, where's everyone at? And I'm glad that it's not a thing anymore. There's redeploy drones only move when they're deep in the gas. And of course, then increase redeploy drone catapult distance. So it's gonna make it easier for you to get even farther across the map. They're really trying to make it so you can traverse the map and stay in the game more often than you are going to be out there's also less extreme default first circles which is going to be essentially they don't want this the circle being on like all the way from the bottom right corner of the map or the top left corner of the map they want it to be a little bit more centered so that way people have more ability to drop out where they like to it's not going to be as extreme there first off uh, there's low health visual overlay is actually more transparent for better visibility and the low health visual overlay starts at a lower health so it makes it so you can actually see a little bit better and also starts when you're a little bit lower health making it so you have maximum visibility the entire way through no matter how low or high your health is spawn protection time has been decreased from uh, 2.5 seconds to 10 seconds spawn protection time decreased to 2.5 seconds from 10 seconds i know that spawn protection can be a little bit od sometimes it's can be ridiculous especially in resurgence I, I know it's been kind of ridiculous, but I'm glad it's actually not. They reduce the slowdown when landing from a jump. You guys know that when you, you know, jump off something, you kind of tend to slow down when you hit the ground. They reduce that, so it's all about keeping fluidity and keeping the game moving, less like stupid animations and stuff like that. There'll be more contracts available late in the game, which is really awesome. And of course, the scavenger contract is back and rewards guaranteed a plate carrier. Uh, the intel contract capture can be sped up by multiple squad mates being present. And the most wanted contract now awards guaranteed gulag entry kit in every supply box. And then, of course, score events in game are now yellow text. An input delay when getting into a vehicle to accelerate has been reduced by 50%. So that means that when you're trying to get into a vehicle, there's no input delay when you're trying to step on the gas and immediately, you know, dip out of somewhere. There is not going to be really much of a delay at all. It should be rather instantaneous. So now that we've covered everything, here's a few things you guys should know. So as far as like bugs or imbalances go, there might be, of course, a few bugs or balancing outliers at launch. And of course, Raven is going to fix them. That's pretty much like any time there's release of something, there always will be some bugs, some things that they can't quite get you know the handle on maybe they didn't see before it released so they will be actively watching for all that um there will be continued quality of life improvements there's gonna be like over 150 plus quality of life uh changes from this year of warzone but there'll be more than 30 new ones uh with the season one improvements that's really awesome just making the game overall better 
there will be a definitely a continued focus on pacing and of course changes will necessarily be made if they have to that just kind of keeps in mind the player count and just how fast the games are moving we don't want a real slow dull boring experience that's how people get off the game and as far as weapon metas go they'll be keeping the weapon meta healthy throughout the year including tactical and lethal balancing so I know that, you know, like it's it's Warzone. There's going to be some broken stuff here and there, but I think that's what makes it fun is when you get something that's broken for a little bit and then they happen to fix it. It's always, I think that that's what makes the game a little bit more fun is when there is something that's slightly broken or a very broken it's just fun to be able to have every now and again and then finally one of the last things here i know that for any guys that are still watching right now will be very excited about especially if you've been a resurgence player is that fortunes keep and rebirth island are going to be returning in 2024 i was not aware that fortunes keep was going to be returning i don't think they announced that necessarily but rebirth island i know they definitely did and i think that's going to be coming here within the first quarter of 2024 so i'm assuming around march February somewhere in that general time frame is when those maps will be coming but that is a fantastic thing and I know that it's just a huge community of people that kind of got felt like they were alienated as soon as Warzone 2 came out because there was no resurgence for a long time myself included I really did not like that I think that was a giant fumble on their part apart from the whole host of other terrible changes Infinity Ward made I just, I think they should not make another game. They're just a terrible studio. And then for any guys that really care about your combat record, this is something you should probably do is take a look at it right now because in season one, your battle royale combat record is going to reset. In season two, your resurgence combat record will reset. And then season three, for any guys that play plunder, like to level up your guns there and care about your stats there, that will reset within season three. So they're kind of rolling it out in a little bit of like phases, but that is basically all the information we need to know here. It was quite a lot but thank you guys for coming through if you guys have any questions let me know down in the comment section below and i look forward to seeing you here on the channel for when warzone 3 or model for 3 warzone i just call it warzone 3 drops if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to give it a like for the algorithm subscribe for more and i'll see you guys all next time